group there have put together a pretty cool opportunity for us. And every time one of you all jump on and, and cover our games and, and then talk about them later with your shows like this is a big deal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Nick has been nothing but great, even even on our end, you know, in, not just with uh, the basketball league and working with each of the teams and uh, the owners, the coaches, you guys, you and Evelyn, um, but us broadcasters as well. He kind of works with us, make sure that uh, our streams come out good, that we have stuff to talk about, especially in times of this nature, you know, where mm-hmm. a lot of sports are out. So uh, shout out to Nick Shupak. He's, he's a great guy, does a good job of keeping sportscaster up and going. So I got a few questions I was wanting to get out there and I had a, one of these questions actually was um, brought in by uh, one of the guys that uh, I work with on Unwrap Sports Network, Perry Aston. I'll mention his name again when I get to that question. But the first one, really, when did the idea for the basketball league occur and, and how did it come about? Well, the, the, Lawrence, that's a great question. I, I, I was um, in basketball for quite a while. I was uh, the Before I came back to the United States, I was the commissioner of the NBL Canada, which is a great league in, 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 in eastern Canada. They start from, from Windsor, in Ontario, which is by Detroit, and it goes to the Maritimes all the way out to, to Newfoundland, which is another half time zone further than the Maritimes. Mm-hmm. And when I came back to the U.S., I started a league with a different person called the NAPB, and that didn't wasn't was it didn't go great. So we decided that it was time for us to to do something different, and we were really praying about what the next step was. Do I go back to Canada? Do I look at some other options? And my wife was praying about it in the restroom, and it was late at night, and she she felt like she got a, a leading, a voice, somebody that said, you know, do you trust me? And and if you do, why don't you start your own league? And, 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 and it can be a league that's really about the guys and it's about the communities. And do it from a different – that's where the hashtag a different league came from. Mm-hmm. So the reason why my wife is the CEO and the, and, the, and, the, and the owner is because it really is her idea. I had the experience. I had the expertise. I did it. But she came in at 3.30 in the morning and woke me up. And I'm like, can't we just talk about it in the morning? And she said, no, I got to tell you about this concept now. What do you think? And and, you know, we, 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 we started it from there. And, and it was really, again, our guys have a celebrity about them. You know, you, you have a, 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 a 6'10 brother that walks into the Marion Junior High School that's got a blonde faux hawk. The kids in school know he's not from around here. What's he here for? Well, I'm here to tell you about the, the dangers of drugs and alcohol, the value of education, or the reason why... Uh, we, we need to, 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 to be protecting ourselves with this disease today or whatever's relevant that the school system needs us to deliver. We can deliver that message. The kids benefit, the players benefit is they get to do basketball for more than just a tool to get girls or get fame or something that's really selfish instead of selfless. And by understanding the value of the celebrity that they've been blessed with, they get a much more full and rich experience from everything. So, you know, from our perspective, this has been something that's really kind of come together and, 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 and I think been a pretty neat opportunity to help these young men. And, and our guys, to their credit, have been great with it. I mean, some of these guys are remarkable. We're getting in the community and, and, the, and the kids in schools just respond so well to them. That's awesome. Actually, uh, the answer that you just gave me kind of led in and answered a little bit to the second question that I had. Um, Besides the possible, obvious financial benefits of having, like, the basketball league going, what are a few things that you would hope to accomplish with it, you know, uh, personal, uh, community-wise, player-wise, by establishing a league like this? Well, I think the first thing is every major country in the world that has professional basketball has multiple levels of professional basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, The NBA, the G League would be the the, the primary and what would be considered pro A. The next level down would be considered pro B, which is everybody gets paid. They have good standards. That doesn't exist in the U.S. because of the NCAA Division One and a lot of other reasons. But that doesn't mean that there is not a ton of communities and a ton of young men that don't need that opportunity. 
So we have, if, if, we, if this was a regular business, the raw material would be our players. And we have more talent. If I'm, if I'm in the oil business, I want to be in Saudi Arabia because there's a ton of oil. If I'm in basketball, I want to be in North America, specifically the United States. We've got the best talent in the world. So we can put, we can put together a whale of a product in a community that's really looking for it. Um, you, know, you, you're, you live in Marion, Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the 14 of the 15 largest high school gyms in the world or in Indiana, mm -hmm. Marion being one of them, yeah. and, and Richmond, and Newcastle, and, 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 and Washington, and Logansport, and Elkhart, uh, Northside Gym, and all these wonderful gyms that were built around Seymour, around Indiana, are now pretty much going empty since the advent of class basketball, in my opinion. Uh, you've got a lot more things for kids to do than they used to, and we've got these wonderful old barns that are sitting there empty. Well, I think we can fill them up one day. You know, the the the, the wigwam in Anderson is being rebuilt. Yeah, I, I think we can fill them up with wonderful, talented guys that people will come out to see, especially if we're in the community. So now we become, we like to be like the G League to the world. So if the G League develops talent to go to the NBA, we want to develop talent to go anywhere in the world and create this system that kids come to our place, they make a little bit of money. They have a great success, and then we promote them out of our. Our guys do not have contracts that prohibit them from leaving. They can go, and they can't go within teams because that would create anarchy. But they can leave the Indy Express and go like Joe Reddick was on his way to the Windsor Express in the NBL Canada mm -hmm. to make double the money he was going to make here. You know, actually, Joe was going to go to the to the uh, Prince Edward Island Storm, mm -hmm. and he had a great offer, and he was going up there and. And he would have done great there. You know, I, I was the commissioner of that league. I coached in that league. I know what our guys can do. Some of the very best players in the NBL Canada right now, AJ Games and Xavier Moon and Jonathan Lloyd, they came from our league. And they're doing really well in other leagues. And we're getting known as a pro league that can, that, that's, that's worth their look for other, other countries around the world. Yeah, you, you mentioned the Joe Reddick. And, yeah, I have his shirt on. It's, uh, it's a replica I actually, they, they, um, Chris Allison sent this to me because uh, he has a, a little uh, weekly thing where he gives out a shirt to, to fans, and I happened to join into that contest, and lo and behold, I won it. I couldn't believe it. I was, I was ecstatic. It was the first time I've ever won anything like that uh, in that kind of situation, and I tried to wear it whenever I was streaming the Express Games or something. That's great. But uh, I, I really, I wish Joe luck and happiness uh, going forward with his career. And, um, yeah, that's another thing uh, with your, your answer there. You have an incredible amount of knowledge about basketball, not just at the pro level, but at, at high school and, and middle school level. Where's all this knowledge coming from? I mean, my goodness, uh, most people, even if they follow basketball so well, don't understand that a small city like Gas City, you know, the, the name of their high school and, or, or, or their, their court, what, what it's called. So where does all this knowledge coming from? Well, I'm, 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 I'm a born and bred, bred Indiana kid. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I'm, and I'm um, uh, as you said, you know, we, we follow all the major sports in Indiana, high school basketball, college basketball, and pro basketball. Those are the major sports. You can throw the Colts in there if you want to. But for me, it's, they're kind of the secondary sport for me because we are a basketball state. And, you know, I grew up, my dream wasn't to play in the NBA. I, I was blessed to play in the NBA and never thought about playing in Allen Fieldhouse with, with the Jayhawks, which, man, I can't believe I got to do that. I wanted to run out on, in the Lions Den at LaSalle High School. I wanted to one day be a starter when they played the Red River Valley and you run through the hoop and 3,500 fans are going crazy. That was my dream because I jumped, I wanted to be my brother. My older brother was a great player that won a sectional championship. and We had red and black all over our neighborhood and our school cheering him on to go down state. And that was a really big deal for us. And, and for me, that was my dream. I, I didn't grow up wanting to be Jerry West or Oscar Robertson or even Dr. J. I wanted to be Pat Magley or Kent Allison or John Laskowski, the guys that were superstars when I was in high school. And with that, you just become, you know, knowledgeable. I remember watching Kyle Macy, who was a great player from Peru, 
Indiana that went on to play in, in uh, Kentucky and win a national championship in Kentucky and then went on and played in the NBA for quite a while. And I mean, I was in the eighth grade when he came to our high school and it was packed and people were talking about him being a Mr. Basketball candidate, which I didn't even know what that meant, but I got mouthy and told those Peru fans, well, you wait one day in 1978, I'm going to be Mr. Basketball. <laughs> I had no clue I would even be good enough to make the team. I was just talking trash, but, <laughs> but, but, but you dream a big dream. And that's what we did growing up. That, that movie Hoosiers was real. It was, it was made up and fictional as far as the character names, but dreaming to be a, a high school basketball player was a big deal. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, there's a lot of really good basketball coming out of Indiana and has came out of Indiana for a long time. I mean, even here in my small town of Marion, Indiana, uh, I mean, we we produced Zach Randolph. You know, uh, we produced a lot of great college guys like Blackman and and many others. Uh, Jay so, Edwards was a great Jay player. Edwards, they had, they just had a lot of great players. Mm-hmm. Lyndon oh. Jones. They had, a, mm-hmm. they had a series of Mr. Basketballs and All-State players. I, if memory serves me, they won like four or five out of eight state championships in a row. I mean, they had a coach named Bill Green that just put together a well of a product. And the interesting thing about Indiana before they had class basketball is part of the reason they built these big gyms is because they fill them up. But the other reason is the bigger the gym, the greater the likelihood is you could host the sectional and regionals. Mm -hmm. So think about it. Marion hosted the sectional regionals and often the semi-state and their high school gym. Our sectional was at Notre Dame. Our regional was at Notre Dame. Our semi-state was at Purdue. There was no advantage to any anybody from northern Indiana where we were. You had to go through, and everybody in South Bend played each other. Well, they didn't go to different sectionals, and, and based on size, we had to get through South Bend. That's why winning a sectional was a big deal. Winning a regional was – state championship was a pipe dream, but if we could get there, boy, we sure wanted to. Oh, yeah. I, I, I hear you. I actually watched – personally watched those 80s uh, uh, three in a row is what uh, Marion Giants had where we won the state and I actually watched two of them on TV and the third one I actually went to and watched live with my father my father actually took me so that was so awesome how cool is that That well and and, and it's funny you know Lawrence when I first started this league with one of our teams in Yakima Washington our first game there, I walked in, and, and, and they were called the Yakima Sun Kings, just like they were 10 years earlier in the old CBA. Mm-hmm. And a lady walked in, and, and she grabbed me, and she said, Mr., are you the guy that brought this team back here? I said, yeah, and, and tears welled up in her eyes. And I said, what's going on? She said, my mother loved the Sun Kings, and we went to every game, and my mother's gone. And this is the first time I felt like, like my mother's presence was back just watching the Sun Kings. And it's it's just, you know, your father took you to the high school state championships. And they and these dreams came open. And uh, somebody told me today, Jordan Mount, Rick Mount's grandson, told me today that Matt Painter, the coach at Purdue, said when he was 11, he watched me play in the garden against, at Madison Square Garden against Indiana, which was pretty cool. I never knew that. But, you know, when, when fathers take their kids and mothers go with their, with their daughters, to these games, we create legacies in our communities by having a, a hometown team. And that's one of the things we hope to accomplish with, 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 with TBO. So once uh, you and Evelyn became dedicated to the idea of, of getting TBO up and going, what were the steps that were necessary to make it come to fruition? Well, we, we, we needed to, 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 uh, to, to secure the teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we needed to, 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 to get our vision down on paper. We needed to get our, our websites and social media status going. We needed to find talent, so we started doing regional combines. We do these co- things called combines, which are tryout events all over North America. And the concept is we go to the kids so they don't have to come to us. So we, we know we're in L.A. and Vegas and, and, and Oregon and Seattle. We're in um, and we're in two or three cities of Florida. We go to Texas in a couple markets. We go to Kansas City. We're all in the East Coast. So we're going all over North America, giving these kids a chance to try out. And the money that we generate from that helps to go back to the teams to support paying the players. And it really is kind of labor of love. But I'm a big believer in finding kids. That I want to see kids work out. Because a kid that, that pays money and works out is, is giving you everything he has. 
a kid that comes to an agent, nothing against agencies because they're wonderful, but they send you a mixtape where they never miss a tape, miss, miss a shot. Well, I, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I want to see what it looks like. Do, do you win the games? Do we mm -hmm. play a lot of games? Do you win the games? How do you handle when you don't play well? Are you too chirpy? Are you listening to coaches' advice? If I say I really want to see if a guy can run to the corner and catch and shoot, do you always stop at the 45-degree angle and, 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 and dribble too much? Because, listen, most of these guys aren't going to be our stars. They're going to be role players. They're going to, they're going to fit in and earn a spot to become a star and get out of this league. So it really is an opportunity to see how guys can go. And I go to every one of them because I want the same set of eyes on every kid. So that became a big piece that we had. And then, and then we got a really good first year and Albany played a uh, Yakima and 2,300 fans. At the last game was, a, was amazing. And then the second year, Albany played Yakima again. And we had, um, uh, we had 5,000 fans at the semifinal game and 2,500 fans at the championship game in Albany, which is all they could hold. And it, it just the product was great. The, 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 the level of play is remarkable. We have to get better all the way through with our live streaming and with all of our fan engagement experience. Every team needs to get great dancers, and, and we have to get more engaged because people watch pro basketball on TV, and they have that expectations that they want to see good dancers. And, and, the, and every dead ball, we have to have something on the court, where it's, whether it's kids racing each other on tricycles or halftime games with youth playing. We have to have something going on. I'm not wrestling a bear, though. I don't care what Jack can do. <laughs> That's not happening. I'm big enough, too, but I'm not going to do that. Well, I mean, it, it is pretty sad, uh, in my opinion, that because of the technology of today, uh, you have to think about doing what you're talking about right now because people's attention span nowadays are, is just so short, you know, because they have instant gratification with everything that they do and anything that they, they look for. And really, you're kind of, in my opinion, when you have something like that, it kind of takes away a little bit of, of the spirit of the game itself. I, I, I watch the game just to watch the game, you know. Uh, I, I understand, like, some of the younger younger play, uh, fans out there that are, that are at these games, you know, you're, you're trying to, to keep their interest a little bit up and – up and spark but those of us that actually enjoy watching the game we're sitting there uh when you have like a dead ball or something like that we're looking down on the uh, on court side looking at the teams you know watching watching the coaches and, and trying to think what's the coach sitting there telling the players right now <laughs> you know stuff like that well I, i'll tell you though it's Lawrence, it's interesting because if you look at look at uh, our fans a lot of times you'll see you know the, the the reason why our, our competition isn't the NBA, we're not college, maybe some high school, uh, but the bigger competition is the movies, bowling. We want to be, you know, you can go to a movie and sit there and eat some popcorn and be entertained, or you can be actively engaged, yelling, screaming. Your kids can be running around the back of the court and it's safe. They can get out on the court. You know, at the end of the third quarter, every team should have a dance off where the kids kick off their shoes, they run out, and they do the Macarena. Or they do the they do some type of slide and they get off the court and the dancers have fun with them. Those are things that kids never forget. When I was growing up in Indiana, I remember the high school games. I was going to sneak around and steal the nets when the when the goals came up into the bleachers. I wanted to steal the nets because we were going to burn them off in the summer outdoors. So we'd steal all the nets, or or we'd hang out underneath the bleachers. We weren't watching the game. We were hoping people's chain fell out so we could pick up. You know, if I made a buck fifty in a game, I did something because people's chain fell out and change and I ran run around picking it up. But you look at our adult fans, you go to Albany, they sell alcohol in Albany, they have a few beers, those fans get to John with our other team. And it's pretty funny because they're talking trash. And when the game ends, the first thing our players do is they go right over to that fan, they shake hands, no harm, no foul, they laugh, they joke, and then the next week they come back, they're back at it again. <laughs> and it makes it for an engagement piece. Just as I said, when we're in the community, we engage with the kids. When we're in the game, we engage with the fans. Now we become an asset. Now we become something, you know, th there's no great, great secret that Marion and, and Anderson and Gary and Elkhart and South Bend, man, we've hit tough times. Those cities in northern Indiana, with, with become, when it went from the steel belt to the rust belt, we had a lot of unemployment. And there needs to be something that's a distraction for these people. 
So we have all these wonderful markets and all these incredible young men that need a place to play. We just have to make certain that we're doing things for the right reason. And there's a business model there. And that's what we want to create. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely awesome. Um, well, it's no secret. There's a reason why you're sitting there in front of a cabinet at, at your home, I assume. And I'm sitting here in my home. Everybody knows what's going on with the coronavirus. We're trying to, trying to keep, you know, uh, stay home, not get out. Uh, could you take us step by step on how the decision to cancel the third season, ultimately the tournament as well, uh, and how that was decided upon? Well, no, yes, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Monday night, we have an owners meeting every Monday, and a team market owners meeting, a, a management meeting. Not always the owners on it. This one, we asked for the owners to be on, and we said, "Listen, we're going to watch the NBA, and depending on what the NBA does, then we'll determine what's going on." So it's business as usual. We're going to watch the NBA, NCAA, we'll watch everybody. Tuesday night, the rumblings that New York was not good were starting to get out to our guys, and our guys were getting panicked. Tuesday during the day, uh, the state of Ohio shut down all the universities. Uh, two of our teams in Ohio play in those universities. By Tuesday night, the state of New York has started shutting down universities. One of our teams in New York plays in the university. So we knew, uh oh, this is this is going to get a little serious. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday night we had another conference call, an emergency conference call. Unanimously we decided, let's get ahead of this thing. Let's shut the season down now. And I wanted actually to go right to a tournament. I wanted Thursday to go to Albany or to or to uh, Owensboro, and let's have a tournament. At the time we were only going to take the top eight teams, and let's get a tournament. And by 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 Saturday Sunday we'll have a champion. Because I knew things were getting bad. And then Wednesday night, when Rudy Gobert was diagnosed with, with COVID-19 and the NBA had shut down that game, we knew this was going to be bad. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 and we had put the tournament a week later. And I said, listen, let's get out ahead of it again. Let's have another. And that, by so Wednesday morning, we decided we're going to pull it. Or Thursday, we're going to pull the, the tournament too because if the NBA can't go, and we were going to play the tournament with no fans. But number one, we got to protect our kids. We got to protect our coaches and the people that are going to watch it. And I'd say our kids, our players. Um, we don't want to be insensitive. Gosh, no, we'd love to be a, a we'd love to have a champion. But it's like the NBL Canada. Sixty percent of their players, eighty percent of their players in some markets, maybe a hundred, are not from their market. Mm -hmm. We could still have six of our teams could get back together next week. And go to a tournament. But the other six have a lot of guys that are from other markets. Jade's Town, 100% of their players are out of market because they house all their kids. Oh, wow. We could, we can't have, we can't keep them for days and weeks and hoping we don't, the economics doesn't justify it, nor does it fair to keep them away from their family. So we have to send them home. Well, the expense to send them home made it what we weren't going to be able to get back together and have a season. So, you know what, we're just going to have to. We call it a day. We had a great season. The good news is 12 teams started, 12 teams ended. Everybody wants to come back. They're excited. We have a few extra weeks to, to build momentum for next year. We're, we're adding additional owners. We already have uh, Little Rock coming in for next year. And I, I'm, I guess we'll have anywhere from 18 to 24 teams next year. And the benefit to that is we have more teams in each pod to limit the travel, to save some money, to create local rivalries. So eventually we really create this neat league that's cost effective, that still has the benefits of impacting the community and impacting these players. Wow. So um, what you just said actually kind of goes in with my sixth question, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that in a moment. Um, actually, what I – we talked about Nick Shupak and Sportscaster earlier, and how has teaming up with Sportscaster benefited and affected the basketball league thus far in this first season? Of well, first of all, um, Nick is engaged like no one that we've ever seen. If we have a technical difficulty, it's not Nick is, is nowhere to be seen. Nick is on it. He's calling somebody. He's saying, hey, we've got a railing in view you need to raise your camera up, okay? You're struggling to get online. 
at, let's check the Wi-Fi signal. What's going on there? And there's some things, you know, next year, I think we have to, I think the league's going to probably provide uh, backup Wi-Fis for every team, you know, hotspots, so that if the schools or the university or the places where we are, Wi-Fi is overloaded, we always have our own private Wi-Fi, which seems to be the major problem that we have. Um, but Nick was amazing that way. Nick created graphics so that the score could be up there. So just the quality of production was better than we'd had it before. But then you guys make all the difference in the world. You know, people, when he first told me the concept of sports cash, I'm like, wait a minute, anybody can sign up. They can download an app, get a green screen. These guys are going to be making fun of us. They're going to be, no, these are serious sports casters that are taking this serious. And I'm listening to it going, wow, this is really cool. To the point that several of our teams, they didn't even have their own local broadcaster. They just leveraged you. They just leveraged the people from Sportscaster because they were actually into it more than even our own broadcasters would because you're following multiple teams. You are guys that, that do the team in Raleigh. If they don't have a game that day, they're, they're jumping up. Wesley's jumping up and getting on somebody else's game and doing it just because he wants to practice and, mm -hmm. and he gets into it. And, and you, know, you do a really nice job. And then you have your own followers. So if you have 20 or 200 or 2,000, all of a sudden we go from having, you know, three to 500 fans on a weekend seeing us to having 10,000 views. And now we're getting critical mass. Now, you know, I think we had 140 countries, you know, follow us this year and watch our games. Well, that's I, where else you're going to get that kind of support and exposure, which is going to help us get, get sponsors. that are going to want to be on our broadcast. So that commercials and then, you know, all of those hits and likes is the future of, 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 of marketing. And that allows us to build more revenue so we can create a better product for the fans. You mentioned something when we first started. Well, you know, besides making money, it's embarrassing what we make in this league. As, as the owners combined, we make way below minimum wage. I mean, it's, it's way below one person's minimum wage, minimum wage, let alone two. But, but we're fortunate because we've downsized our lifestyle that we can do something that has a, a real heart for it. We, my wife and I work literally 18 to 20 hours a day. It's like, baby, I want to watch something on TV. We got to shut down. We can't, I mean, I'm shutting her down because she's so passionate about it. But one day there'll be a benefit. One day we'll drive the valuation up of teams. One day the sponsorships and the revenue from live streaming will be big enough that we'll be plenty fine. But that's not why we do that. We do it because of the impact of the lives that we can do. My brother died at 57. My mother died at 57. I'm 60. I know how temporal life is. I'd love to tell you I'm going to be here till 90, but we're looking at people today that, that are dying of this dreadful disease. I don't want to waste a moment not trying to give back something greater than I take. When I'm done, I want people to look at me and go, man, that dude did more for life than he took. He gave more than he took. And if I can do that and I can teach others to do that, what are we going to do? We're leaving this world a better place. I'm proud of my four kids and I've got plenty of wealth. It's just not in money. I tell the young people, I say, listen, you define wealth. Don't let it define you. To me, wealthy is a relationship with my father in heaven. It's a relationship with my wife. If you've seen her, she is smoking hot. It's a relationship with my four kids and my seven grandbabies. If that size, that's wealthy, Lawrence, I'm the wealthiest guy you've ever known. Because right. that's what I have. I don't have any money, but I got wealth. And if I can teach young men about that, that's something all of us can have. It's just a matter of are we disciplined enough and willing enough to sacrifice to have it. I am and I'm fortunate for it. Yeah, I think the three biggest things for me when it comes to, as you say, wealth is obviously the love around you, uh, happiness in your current situation, um, like not just your job, but um, just those around you and, and, and knowing that, that you are appreciated because you do do the things that you know you need to do around your community and and for others so yeah i i try to live by that but obviously i mean we we have to live in in a world that is kind of driven by a financial basing so mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I, I hope I hope that uh, the basketball league really picks up. You get your sponsors, and you're able to to um, improve lifestyle wise. That way, you can uh, the more money you make, the 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 bigger and uh, better the the basketball league will end up becoming. So you know, well, for me, it's a little less driving, a little more flying, mm-hmm. a little better, a little better graphics on our live streaming and on our social media, a little better presence on the social media. You know, more money for the kids, more opportunity for the players, you know, able to do things to promote them better, create really cool highlight videos from the things that that, that Nick gives us. We have TVL TV this year, which was Nick would give us the highlights and we would, you know, we could go upstream in the production of that. Maybe get some of you guys involved and have the, the sportscaster of the weekend that we start doing a piece of that. And, you know, we want to do a sportscaster combine that when we do our draft combine, we have all the sportscaster people come to Indiana, maybe have like a sportscaster com, like Comic Con, where you guys come in and, and you and you learn a lot of tools from Nick and people and, and we get you broadcasting our games and get to know our players and, and our owners and our coaches so that you know we leverage this relationship and you get more out of it. And a little bit of money allows us to do those things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of the money and uh, hopes and dreams. What are your plans, hopes, dreams for the future of the basketball league? Well, I, I think I think what you're going to see in the in the next two to three years is maybe as this is kind of a a, 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 a little sneak preview of things to come. We're going to have a development league eventually called TVL two, and that will be. I, I just see so much talent that don't get this opportunity. It'd be like a G league to us, and that's a little lower level, a little lower pay little less venue, but still standards. Still, they get paid. They're still on live stream. They're still on stats. They still, they, they get an entree that when our guys get promoted to another level, kid goes to Canada, we take a guy up. So we're creating this feeder system. We're going to probably do WTBL next summer, which is going to be a women's league. We want to become the brand for mid-level pro basketball in North America. And at the same time, we have this wonderful brand of impact and community. So our young ladies, our, our development guys, all of those people still will have the same edict of getting in the community and impacting lives. But now look at the jobs we're creating. So now more broadcasters, more coaches, more executives, more ownership opportunities. You know, all of these opportunities that come behind that. And, you know, quite frankly, that's funding. A little bit of funding. If I had the funding, we would be announcing all of that next week because the, we've flushed it out already. It's just we have to have commissioners to run that. We've got to have the right people because we're going to do everything the right way so that you know we can stand the test of time. And 20 years from now, there's, there's 30, 40 TBL teams and there's 80 TBL2 teams and there's 30, 40 WTBL teams. And we're throughout North America from Mexico and Puerto Rico to the Canadian, all the Canadian provinces to Hawaii and Alaska because in in our model, we only need four teams in an area to have a pod. And when we do that, we can play most of our games and the travel costs really aren't that bad. So then we create this really cool thing that TBL means something and the big picture is pretty exciting. That is that is amazing. Now, what you were talking about earlier about having like your sub-level team, it's kind of taken a little bit out of uh, uh, what the MLB does, right? Having their secondaries so that, you know, when – something how they can bring people up we we that. become we become double a and triple a baseball is what we will do exactly. yeah we're we're not competing with the with with the with the g league and, and we're not really competing with the nbl canada because you know they play in much bigger venues on ice that cost a lot of money to convert and they pay their guys considerably more than we do so if one of our guys can go up there work god love them go do it i'm for the nbl canada every step of the way i can and i help promote them because there's some great owners and great people and amazing fans. The people up there really love their, their players, whether it's the London Lightning or the, or the Moncton Magic or the, or the Island Storm or all those different teams up there are really passionate about their kids, the Halifax Hurricanes. There's some great fans. I, I used to love going up there and seeing them, and, and I'm pretty involved. Whenever I go to a game, even one of our games here, I never sit anywhere more than four to six minutes, and I go sit by other fans. I want to hear what they say. I want to hear it. And usually they complain about the refs. No matter what level, they've always got some complaint about the refs. I'll be like, okay, well, what's wrong? Why well, your refs are terrible? Yeah, okay, well, tell me 
tell me what's wrong with them. Well, they, they're against our guys. Well, what does that mean? And, you know, by the time, hopefully I get them to reason with me that they go, they made a bad call. Well, so did they did the NBA. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no one that you're always at. But I'll tell you what, if our guys made as many catches and made as many shots, percentage-wise, as our refs made calls, we'd be a pretty good, we'd be a pretty high level because those guys don't miss many calls. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I could only imagine sitting there and do, do the fans that you're sitting by and they're talking to you, do, do they know who you are when, when, when you talk to them about that? Or is it just uh, like a fan thing? It, it, it'd be all Canada. They all did because I got to be pretty, pretty exposed. So I'm like, I sneak up in a gym that, in an arena that seats 7,000, I'd sneak up into the stands when somebody's yelling at me and I'd wait till I leave for popcorn. Then I go sit in their seat. And then they come back and they're like, whoa, what are you doing? I said, I heard you weren't real happy. Let's talk. It's good. Give me some of that popcorn. And I just start talking to them. Um, here, they know I'm somebody because I have a suit on and I'm walking around. They don't really know who. Often they think I own the team, which I don't own any of these teams. But I'll ask them, you know, listen, I, my, my wife owns the league. I'm the president of the league. And you know, I'd, I'd love your opinion of what you think. And I, We've got an amazing commissioner named Carnell Wiley, and he's really good at that too. So, you know, my wife kind of stays back, and she's more of the technical person that wants to make certain the stats are being done and the live stream's going good and, and everything's being run well. And she gets kind of engaged, but not like me. That's my personality. I want to get out there and listen to what and something like the, and the Indian Express. In the Express game, I sat next to a a, a, a councilman from from Indianapolis and. You know, hey, we need to get into schools. Well, I can help you with that. And so I'm, you know, kind of complimenting the owner and complimenting the local management of the team by trying to get to know these folks. Yeah, earlier you were talking about how big you wanted uh, the basketball league to expand in the next two or three years. And to a lot of people listening, uh, that might seem like a very, you know, far shot what you're going for. But in my experience, you always aim high, no matter what you do. Because you know, even if you fall short of what you're aiming for, you're still gonna you're still gonna uh, end up going higher than what you would have if you would have aimed at a at a lower level. So, I think I think your plans that you have going right now for the future of the basketball league and and for uh, obviously the players and 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 this thing that you've got that you're talking about with the combine stuff and possibly bringing in uh, sports casters like got people like myself, you know, that would, I'm really excited to see if this stuff comes to fruition because that it would be really, really interesting. Well, we're, we're even going to take our guys on world tours when we can travel again. You know, there's a lot of world tours that kids can go on, but they always have to pay. So I want to find a world tour that will pay us to come do camps and clinics and, and play against teams and, New Zealand and China and England and different markets, and then give our guys exposure. And all they got to do is do free camps and clinics, and we get everything paid for for them. And, and that would be cool. Maybe we'll even, if we can get next funding, send one of the sportscaster guys so that they can film it and be broadcasting back. I mean, I think it's, again, partnering the right way makes it work. And I'll tell you an analogy. I love your shoot for the stars. If you don't get there, you might still land on the moon, right? Yeah. My, my daughter was going to win Wimbledon. My daughter's going to win the U.S. Open. My daughter's going to be a, a big-time tennis player. She was really good. And you know what? She did. Or she didn't make it. She was a seven-time All-American at Florida. She won the NCAA championship. She got her college paid for. She played on the women's tour. She beat number one in the world like Maria Sharapova and Yelena Yankovic on the, on the tour. But she didn't win Wimbledon. But is she really a failure? No. You know, I... If she didn't dream that big dream, I don't think she would have ever gotten to where she was. Exactly. And that's what I believe you do is, is, is we're dreaming big, but I think we're going to get there because part of our dream is vision. And, and as my wife always says, God never gives you a vision without provision. So we know that that provision is going to come. We don't know where it's coming from, but we know what's going to come. And we're just going to keep plowing forward with it till we make it happen. And, you know, people like you help us get the word out. This is why... When you said you want to join on, absolutely. And whether two people or see this or 200 or 2,000, someone could see this and say, wow, I want a team. I want to invest. I want to sponsor. I want to, I love what they do. More, more people will sponsor the, 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 the polo shirts than they will our jerseys. 
because the polo shirts go in the communities. Mm -hmm. The polo shirts go into the camps and the clinics. They impact the lives and businesses want to be partnered with leagues and teams that impact communities. So we think we have something to sell as well. That's, that is absolutely great. So we had already talked about uh, possibly doing another one of these at a, at a future date, maybe, maybe with your wife as well. Uh, that would be absolutely incredible. Maybe we can get together at some point and, and talk about that. But uh, for now, I'm sorry, I haven't eaten yet today. I no, no, you got to hate my wife's cooking chicken wings. I'm excited to get out there, number one. And number two, next time it will just be her. You don't have to have this ugly face on her. We'll, oh, we'll put something a lot better to look at than this. I'm like an aging out Bundy. It's nothing to be bragged about. Man, I'm I'm getting there as well. But you know what? We're here and, and people want to listen to guys like us because uh, knowledge that we have, we want to share that. It's just like you, you and Evelyn, you guys have a plan set. Uh, you know the steps that you're going to take and the direction that you want to go in. So I am excited to see how this turns out. I want to thank you so much for joining. Um, can, I, can I have one last thing? Absolutely. Folks that listen to this, please practice your social distancing, washing your hands, cover your faces, cover your... I think it's so true that we kill this thing if we don't let it jump from person to person. And we have that opportunity. We have the power. When was the last time you had the power to stop something that went viral like that? We can do that. And if you'll take that serious, we'll all be out a lot sooner than we hope. And when it does, it's going to be, we're going to be just fine. And I think it's going to be, we're, we're going to all learn from this and grow from it. That is a really good message. And I support it 100%. <laughs> thank you, Lawrence. All right. Well, go, thank go you. enjoy your food. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you for uh, agreeing to join me here on the stream. And everybody who watching this stream, if you enjoyed what you've seen here, please hit the like button. Give me a follow. Go check out TBL on Sportscaster. Just type TBL in there. Check them out. Follow them. Follow some of the teams so that next season you won't miss a game. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen, and I want you to have a good one.